There's a difference between thinking that you know it and knowing that you know it. When you know it, it isn't up here. It's here. You know that you know. The Holy Ghost never deals with you in your mind. Don't misunderstand me. Mental and mind is important. But we have to know it's important in what arena, where? Because remember over in uh, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and it says that we're to renew our minds. Don't misunderstand what that's about and what that's for. You don't renew your mind so God can deal with you in your mind. You renew your mind so it won't fight you in your spirit all the time. Because that's what the problem is. God is ministering to you in your spirit and your mind hasn't caught up yet. So the mind starts to give you pushback on what God's told you to do. And therefore, this is the reason why you have the scripture there to renew it. You want to renew your mind from the scripture, not from experience. You renew your mind from the scriptures so that it will get an agreement with your spirit. Because remember three parts? When you have three parts of something, how much is the majority? Two parts is the majority, right? The idea is to get all three of them in agreement. But if you can get two of them in agreement, you're better than one fighting by itself. And that's what's happening to most Christians. It's the spirits fighting by itself because the mind hasn't been renewed. And the, remind, the, mind, the mind is tied to the emotions. And the emotions are ruling because they've, they've ruled all this time. Now they want to continue to rule. And so they're interfering with, they're interfering with the spirit. When the Holy Ghost tells you to do something, you don't have any business letting the mind determine whether it's truth or not. But see, that's what happens to most people because they're trapped. They haven't, they haven't renewed their mind. They think that I'll renew your mind here. I can't renew your mind. All I can do is point you in some direction and tell you some things that the Holy Ghost revealed, that the Father's revealed to me, but I can't renew your mind. You are responsible to renew your mind. Amen. And if there's anything that needs, that's desperately needed in the body of Christ today is people to renew their mind. To what? what, to what, what are you supposed to renew your mind to? To the Word. So the whole point when you're studying the Scriptures is to, to be aware that there's, there's two identities that we have to recognize. The law and grace. Continually. Now, we won't, we won't have time tonight. I wish we did. Uh, to go into a greater depth of the grace of God because we've adapted a cliche. What's the cliche? What's, what is the terminology for the grace of God? Unmerited favor. That, that's a true statement, but it's shallow, very shallow. The grace of God goes more, so much deeper than than unmerited favor yes it is unmerited favor yes but it's more and if you're just going to live your life on that shallow part you're going to miss out on, on, what, on the real truth because here's what happens we're required to acknowledge according to Philemon 6 we're to make our faith effectual we're required to acknowledge what all of the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus 
Well, if we're only running shallow, then the good things that we know are very shallow. We need to start getting into the depth of the things so that we have greater knowledge of what happened to us when we were translated or transferred from Adam into Christ. Now listen, I'm amazed sometimes. Not at me, I'm amazed sometimes at what I hear and what I see and I listen to that people still haven't re received the revelation of who they are in Christ. They, I still believe, I believe, that they're running shallow there. They're not going into the depths like they should. When it says... We are the body of Christ. We say that so many times that it loses its real validity. It just becomes a statement. And we lose the meaning of it. What does that mean to you? That God has saw fit to allow us to be recognized as the pure body of Christ. And then he goes on to great detail in the, in, the, in the Apostle Paul's writing to identify where we are, how our thoughts are supposed to be arranged, what we should think on. What it tells us to think? Think on these things, right? Why does he say to do that? Because you're always, we're always going to be thinking on something. Nobody's mind operates in a vacuum. You, you, you know, a lot of people have difficulty going to sleep at night because they can't shut their mind down. They can't stop thinking. Okay? But what are they thinking about? Something. We have the right. We have a choice to make. We can choose what our thoughts are going to be upon. If, it couldn't, if we couldn't choose, then it, he wouldn't tell us, think on these things. He wouldn't tell us, raise your elevation. Think on heavenly things, not earthly things. Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to take a giant step here from the natural to the supernatural. Most people's problem in their life is they're trying to deal with their problems naturally. When if they'll take the step and move over to the spiritual side, that God can't help you with your problem when you're in the natural. You got your hands on it. You got your fingerprints all over it. It's yours. You want God to get involved? You're going to have to get out of the natural and move over to the spiritual. How do you do that? Number one, you have to be in Christ. Number two, it sure helps to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen. Number three, we need a, a constant renewal of the Spirit. A lot of people who are Christians, they go to church on Sunday. They may or may not come, they may or may not go to church on Sunday night. They may or they may go back to church on Wednesday, but probably not. And they're trying to let that one event carry them through their whole week and accomplish things spiritually. But here's the whole problem of this. The majority of the time, once they leave church on Sunday, they don't think about God anymore till Sunday again when they start getting ready to, to, to reappear on Sunday morning. What about the time? What about the other six days here? There's no constant renewal of their spirit. It's a mind battle. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that they're not trying to win. I'm not saying that they're not trying to live. But there's a better way. For a believer, there's a better way. Now, for the world, <laughs> that's the only way they know. But for a Christian, a believer, to be Lord, their standards to that arena is wrong. It's an abomination. It is ungodly. It's not God's will. 
What is God's will in this arena, in this, in this thought line right here? What is God's will? God's will is that you get into the position for the spiritual side and the supernatural to work for you. That when you come up against something that's impossible naturally, it's not impossible spiritually. It's only impossible naturally. But if all you're going to do is engage the mind in it, it's impossible for you to win because the deck's stacked against you in the mental you have to come over into the spiritual. How do you get over into the spiritual? By constant renewal of the Spirit in you. God will give you instructions by the Holy Ghost in your spirit when you walk or live in the Spirit. But when you disengage with Him and go six days without even thinking about Him, what do you expect? It's a, in other words, you got to keep your mind constantly on winning. God didn't have Jesus go to the cross for the body of Christ to be a mockery to the world. But what happens is the body of Christ is lagging back and behind in their knowledge, in wisdom, in understanding, because they're living mentally. You can only accept the spiritual things of God through your spirit. We should learn the way of the spirit. We can learn the way of the spirit. A lot of times I've said this um, in talking to people, and they, they make a statement like, God said that I'm supposed to do this. Well, I know better than that because that's not the way of the Spirit. That's not God's way. That's a man-made situation, and they think if they can identify it and tag it that God said, everybody will believe it. I don't believe it. Because I've spent 40 years, I don't know all there is to know about it, but I've spent 40 years learning the way of the Spirit. And it would behoove you to start adjusting your sights so that you can learn. It's not mental. Remember, you've got to understand this. The mind has nothing to do with spiritual things. So when you're learning the ways of the Spirit, you're learning in your spirit the ways of the Spirit. The Spirit will not interfere with stuff in your life. It's your responsibility to take authority over the powers of darkness. We should learn the ways of the Spirit so we can trace the guiding hand of love among all the circumstances that we encounter in our daily walk. 2 Corinthians 4th chapter, verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. None of us can totally prevent the body from growing older and eventually dying. But what happens to the inward man as our outward man is decaying, our inward man is renewed day by day. Now, the renewal process of your spirit is connected to speaking in tongues. It's important that we uh, recognize what the Apostle Paul has to say in, uh, in Corinthians pertaining to speaking in tongues. God saw fit to use tongues as a supernatural event or connection to man's spirit. The more you speak in tongues, the greater the revelation you receive from the Holy Ghost. The total event or the total the, the total activity of tongues is supernatural. The utterances that come out of your mouth are not man-made. The only part that man has in it is you being willing, your will. You're willing to submit your voice. I've had people tell me, well, I don't see the significance. I don't see any reason why I should speak in tongues. 
God didn't ask you to figure out a reason for it. He wrote it in here by the Apostle Paul, and he told you all about it. And he said, every time you do it, you speak to him. Titus 3, 5. Let me give you this one. No, this is fantastic favorite scriptures, you know. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Since the regeneration is a work of the Holy Spirit, the daily renewal of our spirits will come through the same source. Don't do anything without praying in tongues. Pray in tongues about everything. Pray in tongues about every time you minister to somebody. Pray in tongues before and pray in tongues after. See, you're not talking to man now. You're speaking to God. And you don't even know what you're saying, but it needs to be said. Somebody's got to say it. God's not going to say it. That's what he put us here for. That's our responsibility, to say it in tongues so it can be accomplished. When we speak in tongues and we release the presence and the power of God in situations, then God can take that connection and do something with it. 